Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here. GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you're interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number one through 250. <coughs> right now, we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 172. Please turn to it. Page number 172. The very first problem on the page, number 140. Let's see what it has to say. Number 140 tells us that it costs X cents for the first pound. So we, we're going to send some packages, so we're going to mail some packages on the first pound, just like in the taxi ride. Uh, when you get in the taxi, the first kilometer costs you more than each additional kilometer. So first kilometer might cost you a dollar, and after that, each additional kilometer is going to cost you 20 cents. Same idea here. So the first pound is going to cost you X cents, which of course is going to be more than Y, and each additional one is going to be Y cents. Y cents for each additional pound. The question is very straightforward, very simple. We're going to send, we're going to mail two packages. We're going to mail two packages, three pound and five pound. Three pound and five pound. And the question simply is, which method is going to be cheaper and by how much? Well, as far as which method is going to be cheaper, obviously it should be quite clear that it's going to be cheaper to send them together. It's going to, it's going to be cheaper to send them together because the first pound costs more than each additional pound. So if you're going to send them separately, then uh, we're going to end up paying higher higher amount for the first pound of both of these packages. Now the question is how much are we going to save? That's what they're asking. How much are we going to save? There are two ways we can go about this problem. We can either solve this algebraically in a classical method, orthodox method, traditional method, academic method, or we can plug in numbers. Let's plug in numbers just, just to see very quickly what's going on. Let's pretend that the first let's pretend that the first pound costs seven cents and each additional pound costs four cents. It's very simple to understand. The three pounds package, the three pound package the first is going to cost seven cents, and then each additional is going to cost four cents. It's going to be seven plus four plus four. The five pound package, the five pound package again. The first pound is going to cost four seven cents, and after that, each additional pound is going to cost four cents. Now, it should be quite obvious as to what we're going to save. The only thing that we're going to save here is that this first pound of the second package. It doesn't matter which one you call second package. The first pound of the second package, if we were to send them together, if we were going to send them together, then instead of seven, this would have this would have cost four cents. Because you're going to pay first pound is going to be seven cents, and then each additional pound is going to be four cents, and since they are together, the first pound of the second package also counts as each additional pound. So how much did we save? Instead of seven cents, we paid four cents. We saved three cents. Where does the three cents come from? Seven is our x and 4 is our y. So where does the 3 cents come from? It's simply x minus y. The answer is x minus y. So that's one way of doing it. x minus y is the answer. Another way is to actually do it a little bit more classical way, a little bit more traditional way, algebraic way, which is going to go something like this. So we can send them together. We can send them together. Let me put this a little bit nicely. I, I don't like the way it came out. So it's going to be x minus y, which is our 3 here. So the answer is x minus y. So we can put the, set them together, or we can send them separately. If we send them, if we send them together, if we send them together, then the first pound is going to be. So how much of how much is the total weight? The total weight is three pound plus five pound. If you send them together, the weight of the package is going to be eight pound. I think I'm making too much fuss about it. So the first is going to cost x cents, and then each additional pound is going to cost y cents. And there are going to be seven of them. There are eight. Three plus five is eight. The first is x cents, and the seven additional are going to be seven seven times y. This is the, this is the total cost if you send them together. If you send them separately, then for the first package, the three pound one and the five pound one, the first package is going to be x cents, and then two additional are going to be two times y. Similarly here, the first pound is going to be x cents, 
and the four additional powers is going to be four times y. Add them up, add up these two quantities, and what we get is x plus x is 2x, and then 2y plus 4y is 6y. So, question is how much did we save? This is the cost of sending them together, this is the cost of sending them separately. This cost, of course, is higher, so we have to subtract. We have to take 2x plus 6y and subtract from it the cost of sending them together. And that's the amount we're going to save. But as I said, this is this is very geeky, very traditional, very algebraic way. We don't have to do any of this thing. It is right here. We're going to basically we're going to save the difference between the cost of sending the sending the cost of the first pound versus the cost of each additional pound. Because as I said before, because if you send them together, then the first pound of the second package also counts as each additional pound. It does not count as the first pound anymore. So that's what we save x minus y which is exactly what we see there. 2x minus x is x, and plus 6x and a negative 7y is going to be y. Let's go to the next one, okay? Now that we have made enough fuss about that, no? let's go to the next one. Number 141. Number 141. Number 141 deals with number 141 deals with the notion of what is known as rule of rule of 70. Rule of 70. Now it is after all a GMAT course. Obviously we are, we are preparing for GMAT because we want to get in the MBA program. So obviously we do have background uh, and, and some uh, business courses. This is an accounting notion. This notion that we are about to discuss is a notion from the accounting in the accounting books that you will come across what is known as the rule of 70. Now if you are if you are a Puritan, if you are a Puritan, if you are a stickler, you would say the most strict people will interpret will, will call this thing not as the rule of 70 but they prefer to call it the rule of 72. Because 72 if you use 72 in a, whatever rule that we are about to discuss, if we were to use 72 as opposed to 70, the answer is going to be closer to the real answer. The answer is going to be more accurate. What does the rule of 70, 72 or rule of 70 tell us? It tells us that the number of periods, it tells us that the number, number of periods, it takes, it takes for something to double, in size, for something to double in size, the number of periods it takes for something to double in size is approximately equal to 70 divided by the rate of growth, rate of growth per period. Now even though, even though we describe that as an accounting concept, it is actually not an accounting concept, actually it's a very broad concept, it can be applied anywhere. Which is why it's written in such a broad term. It's look, I have written this thing in a very generic term. Uh, it's not specific. Notice, notice the use of the words. It says the number of periods, first of all. It doesn't say number of years. It doesn't say number of months. It doesn't say number of quarters. It says number of periods. Now, period could be anything that you want it to be. It could be years. You could, you could express this whole thing in terms of years or months or weeks or even seconds or, we, or, 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 or nanoseconds if you want. Any, it could be any period. It could be a period of one week. Second thing that you notice is that number of periods it takes for something. You see, it says something. It does not need to be a dollar amount. It does not need to be an investment. It could be anything. It could be anything. For example, for example, if we tell you that we have a culture of bacteria, okay, you are running in the lab and you have a culture of bacteria, and you know that the bacteria, that culture grows at 10% per hour. It grows at 10% per hour. So here, our rate of growth is 10%. And our period is an hour. It grows at 10% per hour. Well, if it grows at 10% per hour, then what this formula tells us is that if something grows at 10% per hour, it does not take 10 hours for it to double in size. The number of bacteria in the culture is not going to be double in 10 hours. It's going to double itself in 7 hours. It's going to double itself in 7 hours. Why? Oh, because of compounding. Because each time you make a baby, the babies down the road make their own babies. And there's a compounding going on, just like when we put the money in the account in the, in the bank and if they give you compound interest, 
but that's exactly, that's exactly what it means. If it's a compound interest, then at the end of at, at the end of each period, when I earn the interest, well, the following period I earn interest on the interest, and because of the compounding, it's not going to take ten years. It's going to double in size in in mere seven years. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Let's say, for example, we have a we are told that the population of a country population of country grows at two percent per year. Two percent per year. How long will it take for the population to double in size? I have this country whose population grows at 2% a year, which by today's standards is actually very high. How long does it take? The population of this country is not going to double in 50 years. Our formula tells us that 70, 70 divided by the rate of growth, which is 2, this population is going to double in size in mere 35 years. Or, if you, as I said, if you are a Puritan, if you want to be more accurate, you would use 72 instead of 70, in which case you would say that it will take 36 years, which is going to be closer to the real answer, which is going to be closer to the real answer if you were to actually do it out uh, with, the, with the, you're going to have to use natural log with a base of 2 and all that, and if you did all that, you will see that the correct answer is going to be 30, very close to 36. Let's do one more. Uh, how about uh, if the population is growing at 1%, if it's growing at 1%, it's not going to double in size if, if something is growing at 1%, it, it does not take 100 years for it to double in size. It doubles in size in mere 72 years. But well, you get the idea. Let's do the problem. You get the idea. Let's do the problem. What's going on here is that we have $5,000. We have $5,000 that we have invested that we have invested at 8% for 18 years. Now, in my notes here, I did not say compounding, but it has to be compounding, otherwise it would not work. If there is no compounding going on, then, then of course, uh, this thing, the, the, this whole thing is moot. Let me see. Let me just quickly read, read here somewhere. Oh, yes, it says compounded annually. So this is compounded annually. 8% for 18 years. This is a compound interest. This is a compounding that results in the in the accelerated growth. So that's it, we're done. We have our rate of growth. We know how much we're investing. How long does it take for 5,000 to become 10,000? That's the question. Number of periods it takes for something to double in size is, the number of periods it takes, let's call it uh, N for the number of period, is going to be 72 divided by the rate of growth, which is 8. How much is 72 divided by 8? Well, that's very easy, actually. It's exactly 9. So the answer is, in nine years' time, my money will double in size. My, my money will double in size in only nine years. Or to be, to be accurate, my money will double in size in about nine years, approximately nine years, because this is not a real thing, this is approximation. It will double in size in nine years. That's all it is. What exactly was the question asking? If the pet's parent invested $5,000 in a long-term bond that pays 8% interest compounded annually, what will be the approximate number of investment, what will be the approximate total amount of the investment 18 years hence, 18 years later? We did not finish the story. So in 9 years time it will double in, uh, double in value. In 9 years it will double in value right here. So we have to finish up our story here. Let's do it here. So if we invested $1, if we invested at one dollar at t equal to zero, at t equal to zero, and when when at the end of nine years, my one dollar will become two dollars. The following nine years, the following nine years, which is t equal to eighteen, my two dollars will become four dollars. So since they're talking about keeping the money in the account for eighteen years, then there are five thousand initial amount or initial investment of five thousand dollars. At the end of eighteen years, we'll have. Uh, will have become $20,000, four times the amount. Let's do the next problem, shall we? 142. 142. 142. And in the accounting book, this is referred to as the rule of 70. Some accounting book, as I said, refer to this as rule of 72. It's the same exact thing. So in the number 142, we draw 290 miles, we are told. And we are told that this is rounded 
to nearest 10. So it is rounded to nearest 10 we are told. We are also told that we burned, we burned 12 gallons. And we are also told that this is rounded to, rounded to nearest gallon. What is the question asking? The actual number of miles per gallon must be between, so they are asking for a range from the worst case scenario to the best case scenario. What is the, what is the best mileage that we could have gotten under the scenario that is depicted here? And what's the worst mileage we could have gotten under the situation that is presented to us? The situation being that we have told, we are, we are being told that we have driven 290 miles. It's been rounded to the nearest 10 and we have burned 12 gallons. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. So here's the best case scenario and here's the worst case scenario. The best case scenario is that we, have, we burn this, this, the least amount of gallon that we could have possibly burned and it still come close to 12 gallons. Well, the smallest amount that we can burn and it still be rounded to 12 gallon is what? It's 11.5. 11.5 gallons. So here's our, here's our gallon. Because if you burn 11.5 gallon, if you burn 11.5 gallon, 11.5 will be rounded to 12. Will be rounded to 12. Another possibility is that we burn as much as 12.5 gallons. Okay. Don't be a stickler right now. Don't worry about it. How come it's rounding this and that? But you get the idea. We trying to. It, it might be 11.49999, and this you get the idea. Don't 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 make a fuss about it. That's that's the demarcation. That's the demarcation. There are too many vocabulary words that are coming here, and I'm not sure. Okay, let's continue. I'm going to pick up speed here. I'm I'm, I'm going at a too much of a leisurely pace. We are told that we drove 290 miles. The best case scenario is that we have driven as, uh, as far as we could have gone and still be able to round our figure to 290. Well, the most that we could have driven and still be able to round our figure to 290 is 295. 295, when rounded to nearest 10, will become 290. Again, in reality, of course, it's 294.9999, but you get the idea, okay? As I said, don't, don't fuss about it. Similarly, the worst case scenario is that maybe we drove only 285 miles, which is being rounded to 290. That's it, we are done. That's, that's our range. Our mileage, miles per gallon, is going to be between these two figures, 295 divided by 11.5 versus 285 divided by 12.5. That's it, that's your answer. Look for one answer twice that falls in this category. And that answer would be 285 divided by 12.5 and 295 divided by 11.5 looks like it's answer twice D. They give you in reverse order, but it doesn't change anything. Let's do one more, shall we? Do you, do you want to do one more? Uh, that, that's, the next one has to do with inequality. Let's do it separately. We'll, we'll do this problem all by itself, in, in inequality problem all by itself. Uh, be, uh, and perhaps we will do uh, one or two bonus problems with it because inequality is a tricky concept to understand sometimes. Uh, particularly when we are dealing with inequality uh, with absolute value in it. We'll do it separately. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.